How to flip Toronto houses. This is Yossi, and today we're going to talk about how to flip Toronto houses. All right, so Yossi Kaplan here, Toronto Realtor, and today I'm going to talk to you how to flip Toronto houses. A quick introduction, Yossi Kaplan Search Realty, twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan, where you find all the news, all the videos, all the uploads. Now, if you're signed into my newsletter, you would have received this information by now, but if you haven't, here's the video, and if you're not signed to the newsletter, you might as well do it. Just go to YossiKaplan.com, go to Urban Realty, Go to the investing newsletter, go to York Free Luxury Real Estate, go to the newsletter, and just sign there, and then we'll give you the information before everyone else knows about it. Why? Because every morning, at like 2 or 3 in the morning, I get a list of all the good properties come out, so the first thing when I wake up in the morning, I know about them, and then I can pick up the phone and literally call people that are on the hunt right now, say, go see these units, these houses for, for sale, these flippers, these fixer-uppers, uh, or I email them, okay, or I email my list. So... Uh, today I'm going to take you to 1158 uh, Dovercourt Road. This is a fixer-upper. It's a Toronto flip house. We are flipping this house. We're going to talk about what it means to flip a house, what it means to take a property and flip it, how it works. I'll review this for you and I'll try to do it under 20 minutes. All right. So uh, this house here was, uh, uh, you know, grandma, grandpa lived here for many, many years and they passed to the next world. God bless them. And now the house is sold. Now the house is sold as is, so that means they haven't done any renovations to the house. They're not even showing pictures of the house on the inside. To me, that says, look, you just you just buying the address, you just buying the shell. Whatever is inside doesn't really matter. It's it's uh, just you know take it out, put some new stuff in. Therefore, the house is priced at five ninety nine nine. This is a fixer upper Toronto flip home, at price at five nine nine nine. And it's, uh, like you see these days, it's priced slightly below the market. You know, similar houses in the market sell for about 100 to 120 more in the area. Uh, we'll look at this in a second. This house, the way it is now, it's got three beds, two baths, okay? It's a smaller house. It's uh, 13 and a half uh, uh, feet wide. Uh, where is it? 15, sorry, 15.33 feet wide, but it's very long uh, uh lot at 136 feet so that's important i'll get to that in a minute why it's important how to uh what to do with it okay so that's very important um the other thing to look at is to look at the location so i'm going to jump into the map here let's go in the map and show you where we are so we are at 1158 dover court road which is right here so that's uh dover court okay and it's below davenport and uh there is geary and there's dupont right here so Galleria Mall is right here. This is a giant uh, free project. It's going to have a lot of uh, nice shiny condos. And uh, uh, what else we got here? We got basically the Bloor, uh, Bloor and Dufferin area. Okay, so that's an area that was looked down upon uh, years ago when I came to Toronto. But now it's just as good as any. I mean, there's a thousand bucket foot here everywhere. And uh, I anticipate with these, with these uh, condos coming, in, uh, coming online later this year, I don't even know if they have anything under a thousand foot. You know, that, that's what we're talking about. Um, I talked to you about Crosstown a couple of days ago, and those start about 950 a foot for the large units and a thousand for the smaller ones. And you know, as the unit gets smaller, the price per square foot gets higher. So the opportunity we have with houses in Toronto is that houses are far fewer in between. We used to have, you know, when I came to Toronto, it was all houses. But now it's all condos because one tower can contain 500 units, 600 units, 700 units. You know, a complex of uh, two or three towers can contain over a thousand units in some cases. That's imagine how much room you need for a thousand homes versus you can just put it vertically in a couple of towers. So that's why homes become uh, so important these days because we can't really build more of them. There's just not enough room. So whatever houses we have left in the city, you know, if they're in great condition, great. And if not, somebody will buy them, uh, raise them and build new or renovate them. And that's what we're talking about today. This house on the market here, because it's priced so reasonably, in my opinion, you know, it's prime, prime opportunity and target to take over. You can see the house in the middle, that's the house I'm talking about. You can see right to the left, it's got a nice bay window. Okay, and it's, it's more or less the same size. And if you look in the aerial, I opened the aerial here, the Google Maps, you can see that this is the Dover Court house. You can see all these houses here, um, they're semis or they're row, and you can see that they're probably built all at the same time. You can see from above, okay? So these were probably built together or at least designed together. And these things are 100 years old, uh, give or take, okay? So 
you can see that it's a very very long that's 136 feet it's from the property line here to the back here's the alleyway okay so these are garages at the back so there's lots of room for growth here there's, and when I'm talking about growth I'm talking about adding bedrooms I think the first thing to look at these houses is to see what kind of the maximum value I can get out of it and there's two ways to look at it one is the maximum value I get when I sell it so how much can I get for the house once I fix it up and the second is what can I get if I retain the house kept the house and I leased it okay now in Toronto when you look at houses you know there's there's a lot of them but they're expensive and there's almost nothing under a million um, what happens is that these million dollar homes or even more they may be slightly less than they were last year but no it's going to come back up because that's how it works i talk a lot about the devaluation of money inflation how it's built into the economy like there's no escape this is the world we live in it's just a gravity you know it just in this dimension this way it is there's always inflation that's how our system built on so the price has to come up because if it doesn't come up it's it's a riot on the street as i say so the, the the price of the house comes up and then that gives me appreciation more money for my investment okay and, and of course the appreciation like we talk about uh, is moving faster than inflation in order to make it viable for investors so i'm gonna buy this house at 599 and mind you similar houses in the area go in a, about 100 to 120 more so the final value of the house is yet to be seen it just came on the market literally last night or this morning on the realtor.ca so you're the first to see it if you're watching this video fresh and um, what's happening with this house and let's go back to the pictures here um, I look at this house as a shell okay it's a shell and what I want to do here as an investor is I want to add bedrooms each bedroom in Toronto yields between a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month so let's say right now the configuration of three bedroom without even looking in I'm just playing the game here um, let's say the configuration is right now good you know I'll get maybe it's an older house not a great condition maybe I get three thousand a month for the house so I got three people sharing three bedrooms at 3,000. Okay, that's very fair. Now, if I fix this house up and added two bedrooms and I have five bedrooms and I charge, let's say, 13 uh, per room, maybe some are less, some are more, suddenly I'm making uh, five times 13, that's 5,000 plus 1,500, $6,500, okay? So I more than doubled the income, the cash flow of the house. That's a consideration. Let's say the house just round numbers up. Let's say the house makes five thousand a month after renovation. That's sixty thousand a year. Okay, so sixty thousand a year comes in. Um, reduce uh, reduce the cost of your mortgage if you have any, and there's really not much. Assuming you are an investor here and we're just renting the whole place out, and uh, the cost of acquiring a tenant you can do it for free or, it's, or you know, one plus, month plus HST if you use services of a realtor like myself, which is fine. Uh, so I'm making 60,000 cash flow on the house uh, that I paid 599 plus the cost of renovation plus whatever the cost was at the end. Let's say the house cost me at the end 900. Okay. Um, so now I'm looking at 60 over 900. So if I open my calculator, you probably can't see this because it's not in the uh, in my capture screen. But I'll just do a uh, simple uh, 60 divided by 900. And that gives me 0.66%, so I basically get about 7% uh, ROI here. Cash on cash, if I bought the whole thing cash, I pay for everything cash. It's very high considering the real estate average, uh, traditional conservative average, if you went to business school like me, you're looking at something like 3 to 4%. So I'm already double that, okay? Now, if I were to buy this house um, and take some mortgage on it, obviously, my returns would be lower, but the RL will be higher because that's how the math works. And what happens with the math is, um, let's say I put half of the money down, say 450 or 500, and the rest, you know, four to 500, uh, I get the loan for. Let's say I pay, I don't know, $300 for every 1,000, 100,000 that I borrowed. So my cost of borrowing is about 1,200. So my out of the out of the uh, Five thousand a month. I have about say four left. I'm just going to round it so it's make it easier. Uh, the calculator again. Now I paid. Uh, now my income is uh, uh, four times twelve forty eight. I round it to fifty. So fifty thousand. Fifty divide. But let's say I paid only five hundred cash out of pocket. So that's ten percent. You see what happens here? Uh, 
If you have questions about these calculations, because I do it quickly in my head, uh, I'm not going to write it down here, but basically what you see is you see how, and that was like Finance 101, one of the first classes we took, is the professor showed us how to increase your ROI by taking a loan. It sounds a little counterintuitive, but that's how it works. And that's, that's the beauty of the business school. They teach you all these tricks that otherwise I would never even think about. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Richard Ivey School of Business. So some people see a decrepit old home, I see 10% ROI plus the appreciation okay so let's say the house appreciates by 10 percent a year you know that's another and, and now the house worth 900 because i put all the money into it and i compare it to a brand new home in the area there's nothing under a million so I'm, I'm being very conservative here but you know that value of the house probably goes up by another 50 or 100 a year so now i'm making 150 a year on this house and i invested 500 uh that's like 30 percent return <laughs> okay so you see what i'm saying buy this house fix it say spend a total of 900 um, mortgage about four uh, get four net out of the rent and very roughly you're making 10 percent cash on cash all right plus the appreciation there's two points to this the first part two parts the first part is your cash flow from the rent and the second part is the appreciation Obviously, you do not realize the appreciation until you either sell the house, get the profit out, or borrow against the house. And as a mortgage broker, I can tell you how to do either of these things, okay? But the point to understand is you may be looking at the possibility of 10% return on the cash and another 30% return total because of the appreciation. And also because this house is priced below market, below market, because it's such a decrepit shape but to me that's 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 amazing now you know, my first flip i've done uh between 2000 and 2004 i used to own a house um that was in really rough shape that's the back you see that's what i'm talking about adding bedrooms uh, because there's a room for an addition here so you can add an addition here match the size of uh whatever this building here is here next door i don't know if it's residential or not you can see it from uh, from above here it's the big one here okay that's what you're looking at that's our house and that's the next door so if i completed the addition okay and i added the addition added uh, two or three bedrooms i'm suddenly looking at much larger home and my return is higher because every bedroom pays a fixed amount you know every bedroom is like it's like a dividend the way i look at it okay so that's what it is uh in the area so this is galleria mall right here so galleria mall is a giant giant project um it's gonna think there's eight condos in there and thousands of units and they're gonna be expensive you know there's nothing under a thousand for here okay so you know, let's say you get 900 square feet in Galleria Mall which is very nice brand new obviously no renovation cost and you're gonna rent it out for three thousand dollars okay good investment it's okay but would the house make more money? Yes, it would. All right, the house would make more in this case, in this case. Uh, but there's a lot more work and obviously more cash needed up front. So it's not for everyone. It's a different kind of investment. But for those who understand it, it's a very good opportunity to make a lot of money and relatively quickly too. The other thing I should tell you is, you know, we, I've, I've grew up in, uh, in construction and real estate because dad know that stuff. And uh, when you look here, I'm going to start posting more and more videos of renovation and what we've done you know i just i always done it just because i did because i know how to do it and it's fun uh but i never thought to myself that you know i'll, I'll bring it up uh i'll bring it up regardless but here it is so this is a, a recent project that we did and uh, this is my listing and i brought the crew to make uh this condo it's a 40 year old condo we basically ripped out the kitchen all the plumbing in it, uh, the electric on top, and we refinished it, custom made, beautiful job. This job was only $70,000 for everything that we did, everything including the labor, the licensed plumber, licensed electrician, the nice appliances, or sense of all that stuff. So this one should have probably cost about 85, in my opinion, but we managed to do it. We managed to plan it really well. And the contractors, everyone that was involved did such a good job that came up with amazing value. I want to go back to the picture of this. Okay, so there's this beautiful custom glass doors, laser leveled, I'm not kidding you. The floors are brand new, all the California style closets, 
everything was custom made for this unit and that beats any new construction you get because you don't get that kind of level of finishes you don't get the custom uh, California closets you know just the closets themselves are fifteen thousand dollars but because we're in the business we have efficiencies so we can save a lot of money to the investors and still everyone's happy okay so when you invest um, it's also very important to get the best people, the best professional working for you, whether it's the real estate agent, EOC, your mortgage broker, EOC, your renovation, that I can uh, introduce you to some of the best people, good lawyer, and so on and so forth. You know, everything has to be, everything has to work well, and that's the magic. So, what would I do with this house? And by the way, if, if you are on the mailing list, you've received this information this month. Okay, write your inbox so you know about it. Uh, and I'm talking to a couple of people about this opportunity already. Um, it literally just came on the market. So if you're interested in this or any other flips, just give me a shout, email, call, whatever it is. And we'll work together with you to find a property that matches your needs the best. This is actually, actually gorgeous to have this 3D. And you can see how this little mudroom here, I would basically double extend this as far as I can and make it into more residential space. Okay, because every room... Every bedroom will add another 1000 to 1500 a month in rent. So I want to make sure I have as many bedrooms as I can. Five is probably a good number. I think that after five is probably there's the rooming house stuff and all that stuff. So um, if you need advice on that, I'll send you to the best people that can explain to you all these rules. Nonetheless, you can see, in my opinion, it's a very good opportunity here to invest. Okay? And when I zoom out, um, it's a nice, quiet residential neighborhood. There's not, you know, except for the corners. What is this thing here? Some large industrial building. Ah, that's on Geary. I've been to a party here once. <laughs> it was a Halloween party, one of these studios. So, you know, this is really good. Uh, Geary itself is doing really well. Um, let's see. The graded building. Okay, so that's the corner. Uh, you would come from here, from Dufferin, come up, and then if you make a left on Geary, that's the brick, and there's a, it's a dead end here. Okay, it's uh, semi-industrial on one side of the street, and the north side of the street, it's also mostly residential. And when you come here, this block here, it's really beautiful, kind of a older industrial places. The train tracks run behind. There's some nice uh, new places here. Geary is kind of becoming very young and hip, and uh, I like it. There's parquets. It's actually a very good area to live. It was almost forgotten, I would say, in Toronto um, between the probably late 70s to about five years ago. And it's, it's picking up. It's a great pocket of town. Um, it's safe. It's residential. It's close to everything. Um, it's not the mayhem of the downtown, but you got everything you need. It's a residential neighborhood. So you're going to find some parquets, some schools, uh, nice little shopping, kind of, a, you know, the nice living experience without the hassle of the downtown. Very good for those who like it. Very, very good. Okay. Just a couple more looks here. So, I'm going to change the perspective here to show you. So now, uh, go. We're just playing with the perspective here to get an idea of where I am in the grand scheme of things. Okay. And we can jump to the map. Here's the map, and I'll do the same. I'll just zoom out. So that's Dovercourt, Dovercourt, Dovercourt Park. Okay, lots of kind of staggered parquets in the area. Okay, remember Galleria Mall here is going to be massive. Thousands and thousands of people coming to the area, all brand new condos, which means prices going up. And just here, we have the Junction Triangle. We talked a lot about this. You know, the Junction House, East Junction, all these places. And then above us, St. Clair also used to be very decrepit, getting a lot of new construction, a lot of new buildings. So this is another area to think about, okay? So overall, you're closer to downtown, you're in a great area, and to me, I think it's very good. And here you are, There's just to give you an idea, here's the downtown, that's where... Um, the house is 1158 Dover Court Road, and that's your flip. Okay, so the flip, you want to create a product that looks really good for the least amount of money. You want to buy the house for the least you can and extract the most of an amount of value possible. 
and that's only possible when you do everything on the cheap so you gotta buy the house for cheap okay you gotta do the renovations really good but you gotta do it with professionals won't give you hassle because you know one contractor that doesn't perform and you gotta get another one that wasn't worth it so you gotta get the right people at the right time and we can help you with that definitely um, you can see the information for yourself it's on the market for 5999 my guess it will go for closer in the seven range uh, but you never know i mean toronto is crazy town <laughs> could go for more could go for less uh, but if you look uh, the system here is trying to bring you some uh, similar values obviously looking at 599 you know it's all one bedroom units here or maybe a uh, two bed on lansdowne which is considered kind of lesser on the social scale okay so the taxes are 3500 uh, a year so it's about uh, just 280 a month or so maybe 290 a month uh, it's got one parking spot okay whatever is in the house I don't really care because I don't need it I'm gonna get rid of it anyways but overall it's very nice and I think it's the back facing west that means you can have some nice vegetable garden or whatever you want at the back put a little jacuzzi so that's the house um, a couple of things I wanted to show you here so this is the half post that came out uh, today tomorrow is the longest day of the year but by the way so uh, happy sauce this uh, five things to know in business today worst may on record for Canadian house price index so <laughs> you know in order to sell uh, advertising you need to have a lot of people visit your site in order to visit your site you need to have negative news bad news you've noticed that's something I don't do because I don't believe in negative stuff it's just not good for the lifestyle and they show you here actually what I think is very good news so Vancouver price went down by 4.1 percent Calgary 3.2 and then you know Winnipeg Edmonton Victoria negligible but you know Vancouver we all know that Vancouver has a lot of dirty money coming into Vancouver when you stop that dirty money there's no one to buy these excessive prices because the price wasn't real so it's good that Vancouver is going down because it's going down to the level that locals like you and me can afford again. Okay, Calgary probably the oil a little less, and then uh, Winnipeg, Edmonton, the probably cities that feed on Calgary and feed on Vancouver and feed on what's going on in their economic areas. Therefore, they're slightly down too, but they never went so far. Victoria also became very expensive, and you know, 0.4 percent is really nothing. Uh, but Victoria, don't forget, there's a lot of retirees, a lot of people retire, Canadians retire in Victoria, so it's going to retain its price because if you can afford to retain to retire in Victoria, you have some money. Now, this is interesting. Price are up in Ottawa, Gatineau, six point one percent. Ottawa is happening. Montreal is happening. Hamilton is happening. Hamilton's second uh, fastest growing city in Ontario after Toronto, probably in Canada. Toronto it shows only two point six percent. But I, I guarantee you Toronto is way more. Toronto is probably at the 8 to 10 mark. Uh, maybe just uh, to last May, but Toronto is finished. going to finish this year big, I'm telling you. Uh, Quebec City, okay, it's a small town. Halifax is a small town. Um, a couple of our friends went to Halifax. You know, they're from the East Coast. They went to live there. And they said, oh, they, I, we picked up a house for less than 200000 So 2.1% in Halifax is just a few thousand dollars. 2.1% in Toronto could be $20,000 or 10% of Toronto could be a hundred thousand dollars because the price is so much higher okay and you know when every time they mention economists you know there's no uh, degree <laughs> with an exam that makes you an economist like a real estate agent or a lawyer or a mortgage broker or a dentist I'm an economist you're an economist everyone's an economist so take it with a grain of salt with a big grain of salt uh, the economist and what you're gonna see here is I put a comment with my real name and my real picture and I wrote this should be read as best month for real estate of course negative sells more Vancouver is dropping the excessive dirty money and stabilizing Ontario rocks on very good we must build more to allow for immigration and for us local that's me and you to have more selection at lower prices blessings to all that's what I wrote because that's what I believe you know like overall like it's doing what it's supposed to do the economy is doing what it's supposed to do which is to take your money away right to make everything more expensive and to keep your salaries at the same rate at the same range so when the house price goes up your GICs don't nothing that you own 
goes up with the house price. That's why you need to buy the house. Okay, this is uh, a clip from 55C Condos, uh, South Yorkville. So that's Young and Charles there. 235 uh, square foot studio started at 548.9 up to 650. One bedroom, 509 square feet starts at 720. One bedroom and then uh, just under a million. Two bedroom, million to one five. Three bedroom, 1.2 to 1.35 million. Okay, so talk. Let's just do uh, 720. Thousand that's a seven ninety nine divided by five oh nine and that's fourteen hundred fourteen dollars a foot. Okay, so there's uh, and obviously if I do the five forty eight nine hundred and I divide it by three three five, I get sixteen thirty eight a foot for the small unit. So the smaller the unit, the high dollar per foot, sixteen thirty eight a foot, fourteen hundred a foot. Okay. You can see by looking at the eye, a thousand square feet, uh, 1.2 million, that's 1,200 a foot. So as you go higher, it's 1,200 a foot, but it's still 1,200 a foot. Even if Galleria Mall comes at 1,000 a foot, the cross down is around you know, 950 to 1,000 a foot, that's a steal because you're going to have to pay 30 to 50% more to buy a Young and Charles. Okay? If you can't afford Young and Charles, consider cross down. If you can afford cross down, Consider Guelph Kitchen Kitchener also, like I told you, should you buy out of uh, out of Toronto, which I think is a is a good deal. I'll show you here what it is. Uh, what happened? This one. No, not this one. This one. Should I invest outside of Toronto? Okay, that's the one. Here I show you. I show you what happens with the prices. Then I show you all the hot areas, Hamilton, Brentford, Guelph, Kitchener, Waterloo, London, and Sardinia. And I explain each and every video, um, each and every place, like what to look for, how it works, and then we make a comparison with the downtown. So that's a great video, okay? So that's what I got for you today, my friends. This is the house at 1158 Dover Court. It's on the market now. If you like some information, if you like to see it, if you like to get some quotes from contractors, uh, let me know and I can arrange for it. That's it.